Yo, one of my favorite channels just uploaded a video. I'm so excited. Internet Historian just dropped the big video and I'm all, I'm so hyped. I want to look at this. I want to look at this right now. NordVPN. Yeah. I yeah, for sure. We'll do. Damn. Oh. It's you. It is me. You've completed the crash course on theater and wine, have you? Yeah, now Feeling we're classy smug, men. Are we? We are. Deserving of love, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Worthy of eye contact. The we ooh. That's cute. But there's still <laughs> a lot more work to be done. Look here. These shoes are made from real Italian leather. Wow. This bag is made from the leather of real Italians. Real Not Italians. Impressed. How about this? That is wild. Coat? It's made from the wolf of Wall Street. I, I think it's like crazy, like the amount of, I, I mean, I can see it. I think cosmetic value is like insane. Like everybody want to look a little bit nice, but sometimes like the people that are all into, into this and just have to like brag about what they're wearing all the time, it gets a little bit cringe. An Xbox with the original wow. demo still installed. A signed first that. edition copy of Moby Dick with its little known sequel, Moby Balls. <laughs> and last but not least, The Squid from Squid Game. Don't you get it? Oddities. Weird stuff. Whoa. I mean, the, the first section's on perfume. Listen, I'm going to level with you. I kind of got distracted <laughs> and uh, we went off topic. I don't even know what this is about anymore. Here's my Netflix stand-up special. It should explain everything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a hard act to Law follow. Factory. That Kramer guy has some very good one-liners. But I've got some jokes lined up. <clears throat> oh, hit me Question. with them. Why is perfume so expensive? Why is it? Because you have to pay perfume. <laughs> Why do they call it cologne? <laughs> Have you ever smelt one of those? It ain't great. Oh, huh? mine must not be working. The, uh, deodorant in this market? I'd want a deodorant buy. I'm not awake enough for on? this. <laughs> okay, let me tell you the story. I'm not of awake her. enough for this. See, Holy fancy, shit. People wanted to stink good, but people naturally stink bad. Mm. It's science. So in the beginning, people went to the garden to find the best smelling things that they could. Here's a photo of the oldest perfume bottles ever found. Wow. And what's inside? Just garden stuff that smells nice. Well, that makes sense. But what the hell are they going to do? just stop at that, because the story of perfume is the story of progress. Mm. By the time Cleopatra came around, perfume science had really advanced. You see, Cleopatra loved perfume. In fact, it was said that she had a whole perfume factory. The olfactory, I believe. Is that true? I've never heard that before. If they called it. But this Ooh. factory wasn't just mashing flowers. They were using emulsifiers, adding resins, creating tinctures. Cleopatra's very own Chanel No. 1 contained cardamom, cinnamon, olive oil, and myrrh. So we've gone from garden to pantry. And she loved spritzing the stuff everywhere, supposedly even spraying it all over the sails of her ship. That way, people could smell her from miles off as she sailed the Nile. Interesting. By the early Middle Ages, we had figured out the formula. I don't know if that is true, but that's interesting. There are three main components. Water, alcohol, and the most important bit, the aromatic oils. Mm. And by the way, perfume and cologne are actually the same thing, but in different ratios of these ingredients. Yeah, I've never really known exactly what the difference between perfume and cologne is. I always thought to myself, like, cologne is something you kind of rub into your skin, like a little bit more. You like, like, drip it around. While perfume, you kind of need to, you, you basically put it on its essential parts. That, that is how I, that's how I always thought about it. And I can see, like, this is, Alcohol, oil, huh? What is worse? Like, is doesn't that mean just that perfume is just like overall better? Like, cause it's like oily. That means the fl like the smell of it will stay longer. By the 1600s, they were trying all sorts of different things. 
Some things went well. Dude. Pine. 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 What about orange? I call it new car smell. Mm. But once global trade opened up, our tastes became more exotic. Out of the pantry, it spreads and into to smell the pet. faster, but doesn't but it like? See, does it, it turns out that's what I thought. That yeah, animals have been hoarding all of but the but it most doesn't stay longer. Perfume smells. Yes, in the olden days, a bunch of manly men would brave very rough seas in order to pull aboard sperm whales. Now they would cut open the digestive tract and pluck out a secretion of bile called ambergris, or in English. Gray amber. Don't tell me this is the shit they started putting on themselves. Sometimes they would harvest the rest of the whale, but eventually ambergris became so valuable that it was simply more economical to dump the carcass back in the oh ocean my God. and collect the next batch. Like when you kill a racehorse for its prize winning jizz and then just leave it there on the tracks. All right, quick science. Dude, we humans are heads. fucked. Ambergris comes <laughs> We're from the so gross fucked. Part of the whale. And when the whale eats something quite sharp, let's say human bones, mm. the ambergris forms around them and protects the lining of the gut. That's the ambergris role. That way, as the sharp thing continues down the intestines, the whale doesn't get poked. But if ambergris comes from a whale's digestive tract, what does it smell like? Like Surely shit? Surely not good. When it's dry, it smells kind of woody and earthy. But when it's wet, it smells like ass. Mm. But it's not actually the smell that's the We love function. ass. Ambergris is a fixative. Well, so what it does is heighten and bring out the scent of other things. These flowers, they smell all right, but add some ambergris and ah, that's the one. Wait, what the hell? How does that make sense? You add an ass into flour and now the flower smells better? Like, this is a... How does how does the smell of ass amplify the smell of okay so I guess it's just absorb the smell of it okay I get it now now once they figured this out they realized oh there's a whole bunch of things we can use a fixative for Ooh. and they got quite gross with it they added it to food. ass Mary make everything better yeah In put fact, a little bit of ass on your Charles eggs favorite dish was ambergris on eggs. What a weirdo. Well, they didn't stop there. They added it to rum. They added it to coffee. They added it to cigarettes and smoke. What? It, and they used it as an aphrodisiac. Mm. Now, some people will say that the whale is a mammal. But that's not strictly true. It is, in fact, a fish. Just look at the tail. Oh. And you may have also heard that there are a lot fewer of them these days. Which, although a relief because their absence helps offset the sea level change climate whatever, we were worried that we might run out. So we said no more hunting whales for ambergris. But did that stop the perfumers? No. No. They immediately asked, hey, do you think there are any other animals that smell kind of weird? Yes. Turns out <laughs> the musk deer has some potential. Now we hunt the male musk deer specifically. Yeah, isn't it funny that this is like the way humans been thinking, man? We gotta figure out a way to smell a little bit nicer. Let's try to kill every single animal and take all of their intestines and see if the shit in that will make amplify the smell of a flower. And let's see if this ass will amplify it. Specifically, because it has a particular gland called a musk pod, Ooh. which when dried out looks like this. And it uses it to mark its territory. Does that smell like ass mates. too? Now don't worry. Ooh. Unlike ambergris, this doesn't I love what smell I'm looking like at. ass. Instead, it smells like ammonia and oh. piss. <laughs> <laughs> what smells worse? Does what that's a good question, actually. What smells worse? Does ass like a stinky ass smell worse than ammonia and piss? I don't. <laughs> and you just can't get a smell like that at home. So we started yeah. hunting them to the point where they were a protected species. Oh my god. So the authority said you have to find a different animal. So from there they moved on to Hyrax mm. feces. One of the most feared and dangerous animals in all of Africa. <laughs> and it was the inspiration for the original Lynx Africa smell. Now, their feces, when dried, is called Hyracium, or Africa Stone. 
But it's not just these ones, they have other stoves in Africa. Come on, guys. <laughs> now, the smell is fairly similar to deer musk, but unlike the deer, the Hyrax doesn't need to be killed or disturbed for their feces. They're just using... giving it away. No, 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 in they fact, haven't. Hyrax even have a communal toilet, which is... Are, are we humans like... I think there is something wrong with us. How do we... <laughs> How did we turn all shit into a perfume? Why is, why is the search of amplifying smell the use of shit? This is just so weird. It's used for generations, which makes it very easy mm. to collect up Eat all that. the good stuff. But it's not just Put the that with your eggs. Like other animals. Remember those civets from the There's something videos? very wrong with humans. It's Wait, crazy. Don't wash that thing's anus. Mom, mom, get the bottle. Get the bottle. <laughs> get the Turns bottle. Out, is about it's the piss. anal gland of the civet. That's actually the important smell. We're the weirdest fish. animal of Who's far. I agree. Figuring this out. When they use the good parts of the animal, the, it's the bacon <sighs> part of the beef. Mm. You know? Anyway, it's the ass that produces all the delicious musk. Anal gland for the win, yeah. But it must be good for something because Just rub it goes for four thousand dollars a kilo. Holy! But we ain't done yet. You know when you've just killed a beaver and you cut open its yeah. right abdomen? Of course, well, the man. The reason it smells so good is because of a little gland called the castor sac, which makes a yellowy scum-like substance called castorium, and it is used Ooh. to waterproof the beaver's fur coat and also mark its territory. It is also very fragrant. And you know what that means. If it smells, it sells. Mm, yeah, and in true. this case, castorium is more kind of leathery with smoky hints of vanilla. This reminded me about something that has nothing to do with this. I found out like a month ago or something like that. There's this kind of cheese that is illegal in Europe. And what they do with this cheese is that they create, they make it. And then they leave it outside and they let like these flies jump on this cheese and lay egg. So what ends up happening is that this cheese stays there and is filled with bunch of worms. So the whole cheese is filled with like hundreds of worms. This thing is like an Italian cheese or something like that and it's banned in Europe. But people in the black market, people around the world are still making these cheese and selling it. And there's something like a lot of people are looking after. And I'm like thinking to myself, what kind of mindset do you have if you want to go so far to eat moldy cheese that is filled with hundreds of maggots? Now, they try to kill the maggots with some like some kind of spray or something like they kind of remove all the air or something around the, the cheese and kill the maggot but often many of the maggots still a lot lives and a, a fun thing about maggots is that if you eat a maggot um it stays in your intestines most of the time and you can get very sick so these people are eating this cheese that could very much like kill them just because i don't know because they're stupid like it apparently tastes like good or something like that but everything that i've heard that it tastes like it's like you could just eat what it tastes like instead of tasting this disgusting moldy maggoty filth thing like we humans are absolutely insane with some things it's nuts but unfortunately today you're not allowed to harvest the beaver oh, they're walking okay. around very smugly just like the other protected animals but you know what? We don't need They're them cute. because we have a synthetic version of castorium now and it's just as good. And you know what? We've got a synthetic for the whale, the deer and the civet now. And they're used in lots of mainstream perfumes. Modern day, we've got a synthetic version of practically everything. And even better, the advancement of synthetics has opened up a huge range of smells that were never possible to distill or capture before. And the result is some very silly perfumes. You know that bacon bit of the pig? We got that now. Windex smelling, Ooh. pretty much anything you can think of really, someone has created a fragrance of it. In some instances, we're the even beating nature The Burger King fragrance. Herself. For example, you know those roses That's what I need. at the florist? And then people go, ah, oh, these smell beautiful. Mm. But actually, those roses are not bred to smell good. They're so specialized for good looks, longevity, and disease resistance that they've practically altogether lost their smell. 
So often what the florist will do is add an additional scent to the flower post picking. And typically a synthetic rose perfume is used because it lasts longer and doesn't dry out the flower. Yep, we're just that good. And what's the wow. future for perfume? We said nature. Well, I don't know. Fuck you. But what I do know we is know better. it's going to involve some comedy gold. Anyway, so where was I? Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. My wife asked me for Chanel number no. five, and I was like, huh, not right now. I'm watching the football. <laughs> I don't you even know, get it. On the, like on the television. <laughs> you know what? I am going to say it. If it's good enough for Kramer, it's good enough for me. Oh my god. <gasps> Ad time. Mm. This Christmas, she works in the big city. Busy professional. My career, this and that. But she's going home for Christmas. Small towns are the worst. I'm a big city career gal. She know what's up. Oh my god. Are you okay? <laughs> I am now. And she's about to learn. I wonder how much he earns of, of NordVPN ads. The most VPN is time of year with a 30 day money back guarantee if you go to NordVPN. Like, I, I really want to know, like, why does he only do <laughs> NordVPN ads? Soon I will have installed public Wi Fi in all of Nordville. And once they use it, their private data will be. I'm starting to think exposed. it's because they're like funny. Governor Craven's got this town by the baubles. And I can't believe that big city company you work for works with him. Come on, we have to put up the Nordmus lights for the big Nordmus festival. What? <laughs> Let's go ice skating. What? Wow. <laughs> He's so cute, but I'm a city girl. Girl, you sound like you're in love. I thought I knew what Nordmus meant. But it means nothing without you. It's like the end of March. It's always Nordmus time of year with Nord's huge discount on a two-year plan. Use the URL. NordVPN.com slash internet story for a 30-day money-back guarantee is the best VPN in town. Now I love small town. And I'm in love with Nordman. But I can't leave behind big city Korea. True love and a really good VPN don't come around too much. What is going you on? You gotta take a chance. Boss, I don't care about making partner at the firm anymore. I've found my new home. Big public Wi-Fi is spreading across home. the city. Nordmus will be ruined. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh, oh. Need a hand? How are we going to stop him, Nordman? With this Nord Just use a brick. brick. Yeah, there you go. I love you, Nordman. And I love you, big city woman. Let's go home and watch the international Netflix. They didn't even catalog. kill Santa. They killed him right now. It's Nordmus Wow. Go to nordvpn.com slash internet story. This video it. came out in April. Th this video came out in April. I feel like they made this ad like four months ago. <laughs> and they forgot about it. <laughs> They're a little bit slow. <laughs> like, I don't know if this is the right timing. <laughs> Huge deal on a two-year plan, plus four bonus Nordmus months. <laughs> Ad's over. You know, that ad makes me think about the time I nearly had a wife. Ooh. Feels like a lifetime ago now. It was a good last time. I was in Japan, living the digital nomad lifestyle. Ooh. I had a startup selling seashells down <gasps> by the seashore. That is amazing. But I broke the one rule of being a digital nomad. And what happened? I got mad <gasps> digitally <laughs> and that's when I saw her it was love at first sight I remember her laugh oh that's beautiful her touch Ooh. every morning breakfast in bed but the truth was isn't love beautiful money. guys wow no money alone so I, Poor. I sought out to make my fortune I tried so many things. No, nobody's ever seen this before. I actually think this sucks. I'm out. And I bet you're wondering how I finally struck it rich. Yeah. Well, truth is, I'm the guy who invented him. the Joe Rogan podcast. Ooh. Once I became a gajillionaire, I went back to that beach to try and find her. But instead... I hit her with my boat. We never found her body. But she had a secret. 
one she took to her grave that I was sworn not to tell. She's not around, so... Dude, she was a mermaid! Wow! <laughs> Come on, <laughs> champ, we're fuck? going to Japan. <laughs> what? And here's where it all begins. <laughs> Did any of this make any sense? <laughs> what just happened? The year 2022. It's a Tuesday, probably. And local Tuesday. folklore researcher Hiroshi Kinoshita is looking up some fantastical animals mm. in the National Yokai Dictionary. It's like the bestiary from Witcher, right? Is it a script written by AI? I'm gonna be real. A script as beautiful as that, I don't think AI can reach that point. That was a masterpiece. Wow. Photo negative of a mermaid mummy. Oh my god. He says in Japanese. Upon seeing the mermaid, he knows that he must track it down. He must form a team. Researchers, assemble. So he gets together the best damn crew that he can mm. from the University of Science and Arts at the Okiyama Prefecture. And he plans to track down the mermaid mummy, wherever it has escaped to. Now, it doesn't take him long to figure out that it's being held at the Inuin Temple in Asakuchi. You know the one. Uh. So he struts up to the sacred building. And there at the back of the temple is a fireproof safe. And inside of that is an old wooden box. And inside the old wooden box was the mermaid. We found it. We found a real one. But where did it come from? Well, alongside the mermaid was a note that dated back from 1903, and it said, A dried human fish, aka Ningyo, was caught almost 300 years ago over in the seas of Tosa. It was then dried out and taken to Osaka. And from there, it was passed around to many different people until it arrived at the temple. Now, the Ningyo have an important history in Japan, and sightings of these half-fish, half-human creatures have cropped up all across the country. Kinoshita himself had personally tracked down 13 of them all across Japan, usually kept in museums and temples. That is crazy. However, what you might not know is that tradition... What a beautiful little boy. Oh my, that is horrifying. They have been associated with bad omens. I. And everyone knows Poor the girl. infamous <laughs> tale of Yao Bikuni. But I'll recite mm. it to you just in case. So the story is that one day, a poor fisherman catches the biggest fish of his life. Mm. It was a strange looking fish. And its head was almost human like. I wonder why it was strange looking. What could possibly have done made <laughs> it look a little bit weird? Might it be the eyes on its like sides? Might it be the, f the fact that they look like they are getting fucked? Or is it the horns? Is it the fact that its fish has hair? Like what? What is? <laughs> but he brought oh my his God. Fish home yeah, and invited all of his friends and family to come over for a feast to celebrate his largest catch. Uh -huh. He's got his arms stretched out like this. He's like, it was this big. No, it was Damn. this big. I swear, it was this big. That's crazy. During dinner. One of the guests sneaks into the kitchen to see just how big it was. This big? I can't believe it. And he discovers that it is actually a Ningyo. Oh no, oh. he says in perfect Japanese. Now he quickly warns the other guests, don't eat it. And he warns them just in time. Teishi. They've got their fork like right up to their mouth. Teishi eating that. <laughs> Teishi, don't do it. They throw all their food away. Let's just have some rice and drink the night away. That's the okay. simplest way. So they do. And they have a lovely... Don't eat the weird fish with hair and eyes all over it. dishonorable guest. Just drink it and eat rice. Bit of the meat out of the trash and put it in his pocket. Mm. He then goes home drunk and falls asleep. He didn't eat it. But when he woke up the next morning, he checks his pockets and... <sighs> no! The delicious fish piece is gone. Turns out, in the night, his daughter had been rummaging around in his pockets looking for treasure. What? And she found the meat from his pocket. And she was such a greedy guts. Why she does she have, like, paper towels or cardboard on her head? Like, what is going on here? She decided to eat it then and there. The is she, like, trying to become a fish? For his daughter. But she didn't seem to be sick. 
Do you feel weird at all? And he's shaking her. He decided Shake not to her tell a little bit, her. see if it fixes it. Maybe it'll all be okay. However, from that day forward, the daughter never aged. That's right. She remained a young adult forever. She eventually went on to marry. But as her husband got older, she stayed the same age. Eventually, Ooh. her father got old and died. And soon oh, enough, did her husband too. Well, rip. Everyone she ever knew was getting older and dying, but she remained the same age. She was immortal. Eventually, at it's age 120, she decided to shave her head and become a Japanese nun. She traveled the country, planting trees as she went, and she did this for eight hundred years. This is a real story. But eventually, she grew tired. Mm. You know what? I'm tired of living. If you she walk for 800 years, like, where the hell are you going? Like, are you walking in circles? Like, I feel like you could walk all around the world if for 800 years. She entered a cave in her hometown of Obama. <laughs> <laughs> and Mr. she was President. determined to never come out again. She begged and prayed for the curse to end, but it never did. She sat in that cave for so long that she turned to stone. Oh, that makes sense. And today, at the Kuinji Temple, is that in her? Obama, remains the cave that Yao Bakuni entered. So she People walked in circles around Japan for 800 she's years. still in there, but nothing was found. However, a stone statue of her resides at the entrance. And colloquially, it is called the Bar Rock Obama. <laughs> so we're back with Hiroshi. He asked the Inuin Temple if he could borrow the Nino. Look, let me do a little CT scan on it, right? And they agreed. Hiroshi hands the Nino to a team of scientists and they get to work. They do their tests, beep, beep, boop, control plus scan mm. on the keyboard, and here are the results. It's stage four cancer. I'm so sorry. No! no but really, turns out the Nino dates back to the 1800s. Mm. The note that said it was from the 1700s was wrong. Its body is made from cloth and cotton, wrapped in pufferfish skin. The tail was made from a croaker. I don't know what that is. What is we show that on the screen. Wait, it's With fake? the mouth of a different fish and the hair this is of a medieval mammal. fake news. And they can see that there's a metal nail in its back. Oh my god. Oh my god it's I wonder tools. who the fuck made this. Like, who made this thing? I. The forensic analysis and the construction materials in its back did cast some doubt over its authenticity. But you gotta believe in something, damn it. Aye. As promised, the Nino was returned to the Enuen Temple, where it still lives today. But where, oh where, did my mermaid go? <gasps> it's her! Ooh, you're, you're back! Mamma mia! You know what, I, I kind of missed you. <laughs> Oh God. What the hell is that now? <laughs> oh God, I'd leave. Turn around, dude. This, the sea is not for you. You know what? I never did find the her again. The sea is not for humans. We're here on the ancient streets of Cairo, and there is our destination. In these triangles, the greatest luxury that all the elites crave. Oh god, no, no not, not that. <laughs> the, the second most thing that... Mummies! You can find them in these tombs and there's only ever like one dude guarding them. But before we take, we must understand. Mummification started over 5,000 years ago. A long time ago. And they were first discovered by the Europeans in the 15th century. But the legend goes, the locals knew about them even earlier than that. It's an elaborate process, but essentially, you're drying the person out, turning them into a human But I was born, yep. All right, so when the Europeans 5, found years all these ago. mummies, what do you think they did? On the release uh, of World War Put it in a museum, Warcraft. right? Wrong. They used these mothers for everything, and everybody wanted them. What do you mean they used them for everything? Well... 
Fancy people would take whole mummies and show them off to their friends at fancy dinners. To really- What the fuck? You eating like right next to a mummy? That shit must be disgusting and smelly as fuck. Show off the Actually, it might not. I think mummies probably don't smell at all, right? Because they're like so dried up. As well, they would sometimes unwrap them too. They were used as paint. They yeah, let's look at this 5,000-year-old the corpse. They were used what as guys think? Does that make you hungry? Oh, man. Talk about supercharging your soil. Mm. They were even consumed. Don't mind if I do. No, not... She's eating his nose! Like this. By grinding them up into powder and taking them like a herbal supplement. You are motherfucking weird. Mimi. But with such high demand what? for your mom, after a while, they began yeah, let's to turn his mom into stocks. <laughs> No, uh -oh. they were becoming rarer and rarer to find. They were being gobbled off the face of the earth. So the authorities passed a bunch of laws to protect mummies from becoming altogether extinct. These are the last two of their species, and they're both male, but they won't mate. No. But the mummy is much like the Tasmanian tiger. Every once in a while, one will just kind of show up. And prove that they're Hi. not altogether extinct. Omen in your. The year 2013. The location? Dyfus in northwest Germany. We are at the Kettler household, owned by Grandfather Kettler, who is now dead. But he had a son, Lutz Kettler. And Lutz Kettler also had a son, Alexander Kettler. And they are both there at the house. After a rainy day, there was a leak in the roof. So 10-year-old Kettler gets up into the attic to explore. You know, have a bit of a look around. There's a whole bunch of stuff in there. A whole new Old world. antiques, photographs, mm. and, oh, some old roof tiles. Those will be useful. So he goes over to the roof tiles and, hmm, behind them is something strange. A box. A mystery box. This reminds okay. me of a movie. I think I isn't this like the plot of a movie where the mystery box is like a a board game and when they start playing the board game the whole world start to change. It is smart and he's seen Jumanji, so he knows not to touch the box. Yeah, Jumanji, there you have instead, it. <laughs> go tell his dad. There it is. Now the dad drags the box into the center of the room. And he opens it. And inside. I remember the Jumanji. The first Jumanji movie, I don't know why, but whenever I watched it as a kid, it fucked me up and it shouldn't really have fucked me up because uh, I used to watch like horror movies and shit like that as a kid. But for some reason, Jumanji was the movie that made me scared. I don't know why. <laughs> a smaller box, but it's very curious. Tucked into the board game. I just thought it was like weird how the whole thing escalated. And the final song in the movie, like, freaked me out as well. I don't know why. It was just really, I don't know, like, stupid kid mindset. But it, it did freak me out a little bit how it changed everyone, like, that much, you know? But in hieroglyphs. So, Lutz crosses his Or maybe I saw a furry and I was like, oh my god, what the hell is this? And he opens <laughs> the inner box. Inside I can't really mummy. tell what I thought when oh I was young. Oh my god. But there's more. There's also two smaller boxes. One contained a death mask and the other a canopic jar. Ooh. All right, so we might have a dead body in the house now. So how naturally, do, how do you end up in that situation? The police show up and ask some questions. Lutz then explains a little bit of backstory. He remembers that in the 1950s, his father went to Derna in Libya. There, he acquired a chest and had it shipped back home. He remembers a conversation about it, but Grandfather Kettler insisted that it was a replica. Das ist ein replica, son, son, son. <laughs> not a real mummified person. Now, at this point, the police did not think it was a real body, but it was worth getting it scanned just in case. So he loaded it up in his station wagon, and off he went to the Berlin Archaeological Institute. Now, they agreed to do a scan, and so they're fiddling with buttons and dials and stuff, and... It's fake, right? It's fake? Well, here's where things get a little more dramatic. Results? Inconclusive. There is a fully formed skeleton here. Now, that is unusual for a fake. 
Often a fake will just be shaped like a person, then filled with sticks and cloth and rubbish. However, it got even stranger. They found that all of the bones were wrapped in some sort of metal plating or foil. Next, they looked at the skull, and that's where things were the most Is that odd. a key? It was very realistic. Its teeth had roots. Its form was more intricate than the typical fake. Oh. It also had a laurel, but even more notably, there was an arrowhead lodged in the eye socket. Now that is very unusual for a fake. Hold on, I got more evidence to do. So they're doing more tests and stuff. All right, we've carbon tested the linen wraps. What's the verdict? Well, those are from the 1900s. Now the plot is thickening. We have a supposed fake mummy, but with a very realistic skull, perhaps murdered by an arrow to the head and bandages that date to the modern day. That presents a new problem because it's not unheard of for people to do a murder in the modern day and then cover things up by disguising the body as an ancient art. Yeah, but who the hell is shooting bows and arrows in 1900s? Like, what is it? Like, you had guns. In fact, oh, for example, you shoot him? in the year 2000, there was a man who claimed he found the mummy of an ancient Persian princess, the daughter of Xerxes. However, when they examined the body, oh, they found know it that? was, in fact, a potential murder victim from 1996 who oh. died from bludgeoning. Oh, All right, so okay. the police now actually have to get involved. And it's about to get even more complicated. So they confiscate these are like the some, and they do their... These are like some Sherlock Holmes kind of stories. This is wild. Like, the fact that this, people do this is in wild. ...own tests. And the results mm. this time say... Nope, this thing is 2,000 years old. It's not fake at all. It's ancient. What? Huh? So eventually the experts all get together and go, okay, this is dumb. Let's take it to Eppendorf University and have it properly tested and not just tested, crack the thing open like a delicious kinder surprise. So this new set of experts gets to work and when they open up the mummy, all right, remember how we said that the bones were covered in a special type of foil You're cocking me right now. plating? Well, it turns out the scientists didn't quite get that right. Instead, the bones were sprayed with a metallic chemical that prevented x-rays from going through. The bones were made from plastic. Oh my well, god! The body was. Turns out the skull is real. Yes, a real skull, and not from an ancient mummy, but from a 20th century man. However, it was not a murder. This skull is from a cadaver, and it was medically prepared for educational purposes. And what about that arrowhead? Well, it turns out that that's from a children's toy. Someone just popped that in the eye socket <laughs> as a joke. So finally, the mystery was solved. It's just a plastic skeleton with a real dead guy's head put on it. Wait, how does that solve the mystery? Yeah. Anyway, so Lux was satisfied that the whole so thing funny. was fake and not a murder victim. Oh, let's put that back in the attic, he said very Germanly. But then, ah, eine bitte? Was ist das? He says, another box? Oh my God. The Let's... Book of the Dead? What? Well, that sounds like a fun read. So Lutz starts reading the ancient Egyptian out loud. Is he about to, like, turn into a necromancer? Brendan Fraser. <laughs> and Brendan what happens Fraser. next will shock you and make for a very good thumbnail. That is a... That must have been a funny situation to deal with. Hey there, champ. You're probably wondering why I'm out here on this park bench. <clears throat> Sometimes I just come to see the autumn leaves. Winter will be here soon. Dust in the wind. <sighs> Truth is, sport, I have a highly, highly contagious respiratory disease. I won't be around much longer. No. Dust in the wind. No! I'm like Willy Wonka from that movie. And you're like that ugly kid from the Willy Wonka movie who gets all his stuff. You know, like, sometimes when the internet historian says something, I don't know if it's a joke or if he's being serious. <laughs> like, I often don't know what to take as a fact or not. 
or the Oompa Loompa. I don't know. I haven't seen it. The point is you're so close to being fancy. I can feel it. Mm. There's just one lesson left to learn. What is it? <laughs> anyway, speaking of ancient Egypt, here's this ancient Egyptian gun. It Franz Ferdinand. Hell yeah, brother. What are you doing here? Of course, he's not the real Franz Ferdinand. He's a mummy. Now, the thing about the ancient Egyptian gun is that it's very sensitive. Nice. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was a bad I hit your video. congratulations for being somewhat fancy cake. Ooh, a red velvet cake. I haven't had Come one in ages. We've got to clean this up before the Park Services Commission hears about this, and they make another complaint. Right, we're almost done with the series, and then it's back to the usual content. So in case you missed it, there's also drinking on incognito a new story mode out next week and if you like fancy that's great but if you don't like fancy don't worry it's not forever Ooh, goodbye i love these videos they're just so funny they're like so funny they're 10 out of 10 i love that 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 was it, it's like 34 minutes it felt like five minutes that was great holy